Hey y'all, Coach Nefai here, talking about the pole shift and our Messiah and why it is that he lived such an impoverished life. A life that was void of pretty much all materialism. Well, we're going to find out that he was setting the example for us in this class as we look at the verses from the Bible that talk about the results of the pole shift. Turns out when the Bible was talking about every wall and every mountain would be leveled, it was speaking literally. There's nothing metaphoric about the pole shift. So there's coming a day that for all that survive, we will be like the Messiah with no place to lay our heads. But I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. So let's just jump right into the scripture. Looking here first in the third testament of the Bible, chapter 11 and verse 37 which is what inspired me to do this class. I was listening to this over the Sabbath day and this part of this verse jumped out at me. Let me, let me just go ahead and read it. It says, they did not understand that I had come to the world to reveal to men how humanity should live after experiencing a prolonged purification on earth. So this is our Messiah talking talking about how he was setting the example on how humanity would have to live after we suffered this prolonged purification, after the earth had been purified, how humanity would have to live during the recovery phase. And from then on, it goes on to say, from that prolonged purification, a more spiritualized generation should emerge that is above human misery the demanding needs of the flesh and the selfish passions of the physical senses. Talking about the state of humanity after all of our material possessions have been washed away. We learn here in the Third Testament that materialism is a block for our spiritualism. They're kind of at war with each other. Spirituality and materialism actually fight against one another. And in our present day, materialism is winning, but that will all change after the pole shift. After the earth has gone through this purification process, we won't have to worry about materialism anymore because all of it will be destroyed or wiped away in the floodwaters or burned in the fires or just not functioning anymore. It is then that humanity will become more spiritualized. Like we said, the materialism is getting in the way. But once that materialism is gone away, then we'll become more spiritualized. And it's easy to see that, especially for us here on the Hillbilly Homestead, where we live off of solar power. And when we have rainy days, a lot of times we'll lose power for long periods of time without sunlight. To keep our batteries charged. Well, when that happens, myself included, we'll put down the electronics. All of a sudden, I'm not locked into the YouTube studio answering comments and making videos and such, but have gone back to the scripture and it's reading or praying or meditating. And I noticed that throughout my house, that once it goes dark, everybody's focus starts to change back to more healthy things. Well, that would be the case for all of humanity who are now distracted by cell phones and televisions and everything else in the world. Once those things have gone away, we will have to find something else to do. And for many of us, that something else will be getting closer to our father. And that's what it means to be more spiritualized. But then notice there that it says should emerge above human misery. I guess at that point, we have known the depths of human misery and what human misery really means. So we won't be disturbed by petty issues like we do today. And then it's talking about the demanding needs of the flesh. That reminds me of how the angels are supposed to take over as far as being our provider. After the pole shift, after the purification, we're promised in the Bible that all of our prayers will be answered even before we finish praying them. We will have angelic help providing us with our food, our clothing and our shelter. So 
Maybe that's what it's talking about when it's saying that we will emerge above the demanding needs of human flesh and the selfish passions of the physical senses. We will have our spirituality to concentrate on. We won't need televisions and cell phones and other things to keep us entertained. By then, we'll have a whole new world to explore. Well, let's get into some verses that talk about what this whole new world would look like. One of the first places we'll look is over in Ezekiel chapter 38 and verse 20. Let me go ahead and read it. It says, so that the fishes of the sea and the fowls of the heaven and the beasts of the field and all creeping things that creep upon the earth and all the men that are upon the face of the earth shall shake at my presence and the mountains shall be thrown down and the steep places shall fall and every wall shall fall to the ground. This here is the pole shift. This is describing the pole shift. Now, it's not the only verse. We got several verses to look at, but I'll bring this one up because it's not only talking about the shaking and the mountains being thrown down, but it's also talking about how every wall will fall to the ground. Every building will be destroyed in this global earthquake that will be caused by the pole shift. Now, there's many people who want to take this metaphorically, trying to come up with ideas about how these mountains could represent nations or peoples or different stuff like that. Let's take a look at this verse here that they're talking about. Isaiah chapter 40 and verse four says, every valley shall be exalted and every mountain and hill shall be made low and the crooked shall be made straight and the rough places plain. This is not metaphorical, guys. This is not talking about people. This is actually talking about real life mountains. Appalachia, where I'm from, or the Rocky Mountains, or the Smoky Mountains, those will all go away. And the valleys will rise up, making the land flat again. That verse is also talked about in Luke chapter three and verse five which says the same thing. The valleys will be filled and the mountains will be brought low, which could be real easy to understand when you hear them talking about these two mile high waves that will come ashore. It will push the tops of the mountains over into the valleys and fill them with mud. We're gonna find here in this video that it's not speaking metaphorically at all. It's actually talking about these mountains and these buildings being leveled. We see more detail about this over in the third Testament chapter 55 and verse 69, which says three quarters of the surface of the earth shall disappear and one quarter only shall remain as a refuge for those that survived the chaos. You shall see the fulfillment of many prophecies, many prophecies around these mountains being flattened and these islands going away. You see here that as a result of this pole shift, three quarters of the surface of the earth shall disappear. If you've ever heard or remember them talking about Pangaea, well, turns out that continent broke up as a result of the pole shift. The only thing about it way back then, there was no humans around to witness it. Like today, when there will be close to 8 billion people that will go through this pole shift. But anyway, notice how Revelation chapter 16 and verse 20 actually confirms what we see over there in the third testament when it says, and every island fled away and the mountains were not found. This is talking about the rearrangement of our planet. This is what the scripture is referring to when it says that we're going to get a new earth. Our planet will be completely different. Arctica and Antarctica could, could very well end up on the equator or something like that. And when we look into the celestials, we will see different constellations, constellations that we've never even heard of before. That's because we will have a new heaven or a new sky to look at after the pole shift. 
Over here in Isaiah chapter 24, verse 20 says, The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard, and shall be removed like a cottage, and the transgression thereof shall be heavy upon it, and it shall fall and not rise again. This here is talking about how all who call upon the Lord will be saved. Of course, we recognize that Lord has been our Messiah. He is our master and he is also the word made flesh or the law made flesh. So those who call upon him will be saved during that time and sin, which is the transgression of the law, will not rise again on our planet. It will actually be done away with. And that's when we will have the kingdom of heaven, when our heavenly father, hallowed be his name, will be the ruler of our planet. This is why it's so important to be learning and studying the law now so that there won't be such a steep learning curve after the pole shift. But anyway, let's look at some other verses in the scripture that talks about these mountains and how every mountain will be flattened like Isaiah chapter 54 and verse 10, which says for the mountains shall depart and the hills be removed. But my kindness shall not depart from thee, neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed, saith the Lord that has mercy on thee. And this is important for us to understand here where it's talking about this covenant here. There is the book of the covenant in the Bible. That's Exodus chapter 20, which starts off with the Ten Commandments. Exodus chapter 21 and 22, which are the judgments. And then Exodus chapter 24, which includes the statutes that we learn in the book of Malachi and chapter four are the requirements for gaining this angelic help that will be necessary for our survival. Nobody will survive without having this help. We're talking about mountains collapsing and every building falling away. There will be some people who will survive this. Humanity will go on, but it will be necessary for them to have angelic help going forward. And that's what Isaiah is talking about when He's talking about this covenant of my peace will never be removed. In other words, those who keep the covenant will gain this angelic help and will survive the initial pole shift and will understand how to live going forward. We see that angel mentioned over here in Exodus chapter 23 and verse 20 which says, behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. This place that he has prepared will be necessary for the survival. You can imagine all of this going on in the world. We would have to have some place to hide out. Well, our father has prepared this place for us to hide out. And like we talked about before, it is those who call upon the name of the Lord who will actually find this place. I, I stress this, guys. I'm not creating this video to scare anybody, but to give you a heads up on what's coming and what it is that we must do in order to survive it. All right, let's look at Revelation chapter 16 and verse 18, which says, and there were voices and thunderings and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake and so great. Now, looking at this verse, guys, don't be fooled by channels who tell you that humanity has survived this polar shift before. That's not true. These are guys, people who are speaking from the science world, who refuses to believe in the scripture, which says that man has only been in existence for 6,000 years. Even when you do the math, looking at all of the biblical data from our progenitors and the kings and everybody, you can calculate that Adam was created in the year 3973 BC. 
That's almost 6,000 years ago. But the scientists want to try to tell us that humanity existed millions, if not billions of years ago. And that's why they're telling us and trying to say that humanity has survived the pole shift. Again, these people don't really believe in the Bible, which says that this earthquake will be the greatest earthquake since man has ever existed. Man has never experienced anything like this. We haven't been around that long. The last pole shift was almost a million years ago. But again, humanity has only been around for 6,000 years. So for them to try to tell us that this is survivable is to say that we actually don't need to follow the instructions in order to survive. Because the scripture says only those who call upon him will survive. And there are those who will listen to those other channels and think they can survive on their own and will perish as a result. But let's go over and let's look at Habakkuk chapter three and verse six, which says he stood and measured the earth. He beheld and drove asunder the nations and the everlasting mountains were scattered. The perpetual hills did bow. His ways are everlasting. Again, pointing to the covenant when he says that his ways are everlasting, because after that we will have the kingdom age. But again, notice how he's saying that these mountains will be scattered. That's all part of what we have to look forward to. Isaiah has a lot to talk about these mountains going away, like in chapter 41 and verse 15, which says, Behold, I will make thee a new sharp threshing instrument having teeth. Thou shalt thresh the mountains and beat them small and shall make the hills as chaffed. The mountains and the hills are going away. So there you have it. These mountains are literally going away in the pole shift. And through our father is our only chance of survival. There's no way to prepare. There's nothing we can store up except treasures in heaven. And we do that by doing charitable deeds for our brother and by practicing the law. So if you want to prepare for the pole shift, that's really the only things you can be doing. Studying the law, which like we said is Exodus chapter 20 through chapter 23, and start doing charitable deeds for one another, looking for opportunities that our father puts in your way to help people. That's the only thing that you can do in order to prepare yourself to survive actually storing up stuff, which is a form of selfishness, will actually get you in more trouble than anything else. Instead of storing up stuff to help yourself, like I said, look for ways that you can be helping other people. That's what the Father means. In these two actions here, obeying the law and having charity for our fellow man, that's what the Messiah meant. When he says, love the father with all your heart, mind and soul and love your brother as yourself. That is how we are to be saved. And in the meantime, go ahead and hit that like button. Leave us a comment and may our father in heaven, hallowed be his name, bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. And so be it.